That's Showtime at Homestead, Miami. Andre Barnell skips out the line, steals it, and the Indy 250. Oh, Gordon's in the back, doesn't trouble to let it go. Gordon's on the wall, jumps right around. Side by side on the final lap, coming to the checkered flag. Steve Morgan, the last oh, lap pass, yeah. and the victory in Las Vegas. Welcome to the NOF SRL. Hello everybody, this is Napa Fan here, and this is race number 11 in season number 9 of the NOFSRL Chick-fil-A Cup Series. We are here at the Dover International Speedway, the Monster Mile in Dover, Delaware for the Mr. Goodbar 400. An 80-lap race around this one-mile racetrack in said state of Delaware. It's only known for being the first state, and that's it. I, I'm just Delaware enough this weekend. I'll stop right there. But either way, join alongside Marty Sakala for the call of this race. It's kind of a hometown weekend in a way. Home track weekend, I should say. Uh, I'm going to my home track in the Chick-fil-A Cup. It's the Dover International Speedway. Marty's going to his home track, supposedly the Oswego Speedway. New Era Cup Series tomorrow. So, going to be interesting to see how both races play out. But Marty... We got a very interesting race here today. The grip is not that high here at Dover, and they're going to be slipping up the racetrack just a little bit. And as a run goes along, the tires really get worn down. These guys slow down tremendously. So what do you got to do here at Dover to make sure your tires are good until the cycle of pit stops? Well, pretty much right now, because you said lack of grip here at the Dover International Speedway. You may want to get off the gas earlier on, than usual if you want to conserve your tires. If you go off the gas later on, um, early in a run, I should say as well, um, then you're pretty much go. You're pretty much gonna lose a lot more grip on your tires. Um, not sure what the pit stop frequency is possibly going to be for this race, so I'm not sure how many stops this will be. But this likely could come down to a battle of who has the fresher rubber. And it will be an interesting race, especially with the pit stops. The fuel runs about 42 to 45 laps, but if we get an early caution, it could easily become a two-stop race here today. So, a little bit up in the air on how the fuel miles will work here today at the Dover International Speedway. This is how they line up in the championship standings, and we're now going to start giving you the points as they relate to the chase. So, Alexander Rowe, our points leader, is 80 points ahead of the chase. Reagan Whitlock is 67 points ahead of the chase. Shane Lake is 57 ahead. Bradley Ream is 49 ahead. Sam and Oskin is 34 ahead. Diego Yapez is 26 ahead. Ryan Durrani and Zachary Fitzwater both 25 points ahead. Andrew Miller, 19 points ahead. And Andrew Miller, or should I say Matt Delio. So many names are getting them confused. Matt Delio, 13 points ahead. Coming into the first race of the second half of the regular season. Hair Jalarvin Alonzo is 13 points behind, and Nathan Stapleton is 16 points behind. Then for the wild card, this includes drivers who have wins and they're outside the top 10. All you need is a win, and you qualify for the wild card standings. And uh, right now, Wyakwell and Iquan Hazem have the two wild card spots. They're both nine points ahead. And then Thomas Troxel, Jesse Turner, um, the other two winners we have had this season. Troxel nine points behind the wild card, and Turner ten points behind the wild card. Coming into race number eleven of the season, let's get these guys to roll off. It's Samet Oskin in the eighty-three, leading us to the green flag. And Mitchell Henderson will be starting alongside him in the number 47. A great starting position for the Trans-Tasman Racing Driver, but he is starting on the outside pole for this race. And that outside lane is not necessarily the place you want to be at the start of one of these Dover races. Season 7 Dover winner, Herr Jalarvin Alonzo alongside Cameron Garlington, his teammate in row number 2. Matt Daly alongside the Talladega winner from last week, Thomas Trossel. That's row number 3. Season 2 Dover winner, Jesse Turner in the 77 alongside Eli Bright in row 4. And Brad Stover and Wyatt Quayle make up row number 5. Marty, got a lot of great drivers in this field. It's usually won by veterans as well. As a matter of fact, every single Dover winner, with the exception of Mitchell Henderson, is in this race. Who do you think is going to be in victory lane here at the Monster Mile in this year's Dover race? Well, ironically, because the New Era Cup Series race is in the great state of New York this weekend, and this guy was born from New York, I'm going to go with my man Jesse Turner. He won the Cup race at Texas in my series uh, earlier this year. 
with due to uh, fresher rubber. Let's see what happens. And tire wear will become a huge factor in this race. I mentioned every driver was one here at Dover's in this race, even Stuart Gratton technically, with his development driver, Mitchell Henderson. Here we go, the first state of Delaware. It's the Mr. Goodbar 400 from Dover. Let's get this one started from the Monster Mile. Lonzo went really, really wide there. That allowed Henderson to move right to second. And he got that outside lane to work in his favor. He's up to the second position. Here comes Dahlia. You got Jesse Turner, Brad Stover on the inside lane right there. Here comes Mark Davidson to the inside of Stover. And Alonzo, that's going to hurt him right there. Lost a the position to Dahlia. Going to lose another position to Turner here. Here comes Davidson as well. Going to get to the inside of him. But to the race lead, Henderson. Looking on Oskin, he's got a nose, but he's not going to get it quite yet. He will to the inside for the race lead. Mitchell Henderson going to put Oskin in the wall. And just like that, new race leader at Dover on lap three. I think Oskin just got tight there up in one and two. You know, you we were watching prior uh, action here at Dover earlier on this week. And the high side pretty much just has no grip at all. All that... All that rubber wear you see from the previous races, not really, no, but uh, that's all coming from the previous races. Everyone's committed to that low line. You don't really want to commit to the high line. However, though, sometimes the high line out of these turns on the exit, you've got a lot more momentum here at the Monster Mile where you could defend properly. Matt Dahlia moved up to second there ahead of Sam at Oskin. Got a great run on there. Jesse Turner now to the back bumper of the 83. And the 83 really went wide there. Wyatt Quayle are going to get a run here on here. Jalar and Alonzo. And he's going to make that move to the inside entering turn number three. That is for the sixth position. Here comes Eli Bright as well. Reagan Whitlock's up here in the 92. Of course, Whitlock doing very well in the points. And Alonzo almost in the outside wall. But he continues to fall back in the 28. Something might be wrong on that machine. He is continuing to fall back, just stuck in that outside lane. Go back through the field. Garlington started in the second, or should I say fourth position, and look at where he is now. He has not been able to find the outside 29th the last time around, but he continues to fall back in this 34 machine. You know, he better be careful with those, with my beast racing drivers there, Jimmy Pez and Zachary Fitzwater. Did I just see, nope, never mind. That's so the old flag came out for a moment. But Garlington needs to be careful on this high line here, or else he's going to go all the way to the back of the pack. And, you know, if you go Oh, we got a wrap. Oh, they wrapped. It's Troxel in the 35. And he got in the Andrew Miller, a Rockingham winner, has heavy damage in the first caution of the day here at Dover. And Patrick Smith getting spun around there as they jam it up. Off a of turn four. Threw me how off did there. The beast, how did the beast racing drivers miss it? Fitzy and Yapaz. I hate to play be biased here in the booth like Joe Buck. Not really. But uh, holy cow. That got crazy. And they did a good job avoiding that. I almost said we got around. I'm mixing my catchphrases up. That threw me for a loop right there. Tough break for Thomas Troxel and Andrew Miller. They're actually your past two winners that we've had here in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. And neither of them are going to win here today with that damage. And then Patrick Smith went around and LJ Sameto might have gotten a piece of that one as well on the 66. And a perfect opportunity for these guys to come down the pit lane, top off on fuel so that from here it is guaranteed a one-stop race. Mitchell Henderson won the race back to the line. I have to see if he can win the race off the pit lane here. As everyone has come down, and they're also taking tires as well. And the tire wear comes into effect really early on. But if we get a long green flag run here, you will definitely notice that we saw it in yesterday's Turkey Hill Series race. And Henderson could not get off in time. No. Alonzo's going to win the race off. You know, that was what Air Joe Irvin Alonzo needed. Oh, and he's I got said, contact oh. on the pit lane. Henderson is not in his pit stall correctly, and he's got damage. Unbelievable! What an insane start after the first yellow already. So I was going to mention before the pit road confusion, Alonzo, that yellow was what he needed. I don't know if he had a loose wheel, loose lug nut, or any vibration on the car. But now he's got fresher rubber, he's got clean air. This, I think, is what the 28 wants right now. Looking a lot like Season 7. That race was between Alonzo and Turner. And right now they're 1-2 here at Dover. 
Such a tough break for Mitchell Henderson. The race leader, contact on the pit lane, and he is going to go a lap down. Patrick Smith is already a lap down, but he's going to stay a lap down and not go two laps down. Well, we got a lot to review here. <laughs> so much <laughs> happening here early on in the Mr. Goodbar 400. It's over our first caution here in quite some time. Let's see what happened to bring out the first caution here in the Monster Mile in Season 9 of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. And here we go. Brad Stover got in the trottle just a little bit there as they were three wide off a of turn two. McMillan had nowhere to go. McMillan's been involved in enough wrecks this season, but he actually avoided this one for the most part. A little bit of damage, but nothing major. And I gotta hand it to these guys. Most of them avoided this one, but Patrick Smith and Andrew Miller could not, and it's just... Nothing they can do. Troxel sliding up the racetrack. Smith with heavy damage, and then Miller right into the right side of Troxel. Tough break there for Miller. And all these guys jam it up back in here. Marty mentioned uh, Yepes and Fitzy. They barely avoided that one. We're going to check on them on the real time. But uh, then Patrick Smith, who has the damage, cutting down, trying to get to the pit lane. Cuts in front of the pack. Fisher G trying to get back on the racetrack. Cuts into him. And G actually gets him into his teammate Sam Medea. A little bit of damage on the 48 right there. And I think LJ Semedo in the 66. We saw him with a trail of smoke behind his race car. He got some damage somewhere. But I don't think it was right there with Patrick Smith. But either way, tough break for those guys involved. Troxel, Miller, and Smith. I don't think they're going to win here today at the Dover International Speedway. So it looks like a Dover three wide sometimes, not the way you want to go. Brad Stover just got sandwiched as the 35 and 79 came down on him. Everyone trying to miss him, but watch my boys here under the picture. The 8th and 9th, yip, yip, going on by. Look at all the spots they gained after everyone jammed it up. Holy cow, that was insanity right there. Another tough break for Patrick Smith just getting turned on the stack up. Of course, he already had damage after he hit Troxel. Entering the corner there, but a tough break for Troxel. I mean, he won last week, but he's going to end his chances of winning this race pretty early on. Now, Henderson on the pit lane had an issue. Let's check and see what happened to him to knock him out of contention here at Dover. And this is the pit stop here, and it looks like a normal four-tire stop. I believe Alonzo went two tires only, and he just nicked him a little bit. But it might have pushed him forward in his pit stall. And then behind him, Garlington and Eli Bright got into each other. And then Bright jammed right into the back of Henderson. Such a tough break for who was our race leader at the time. He is going to go at least a lap down in the 47 after leading the first part of this race. You know, when you think of it, Navravan, I know obviously it had to do with the fact that Garlington and... Uh... Bright got together and and it affects the 47 Anderson. But when you think of Dover, it's not that wide of a pit road. Uh, it's kind of like similar to the Daytona International Speedway. Not like Bristol where that thing's very wide. Yeah, definitely a tough break for those guys. I think you got your uh, tracks mixed up. I think you're talking about Bristol being the narrow pit lane and Dover, or should I say Daytona being the wide one. But uh, like you mentioned... Not much space there, and we saw Alonzo actually nick the 47 there. That might come into effect for Alonzo here. We're going to have to see. But either way, let's go ahead and get some racing in here from Dover. The Monster Mile has definitely eaten up some guys already. We'll see if it eats up more. Let's get to the restart here in the Mr. Goodbar 400 from Dover. And after a wild start to this race, we're back to action here at the Dover International Speedway. Mr. Goodbar 400 action. Hope you guys are enjoying this race on this Saturday afternoon. Staying inside, or at least staying away from people. Got to get some fresh air at some point. Here's your Larvin Alonzo, your race leader here. It's going to restart on lap 12 of 80. Right behind him, Jesse Turner, the season two winner of this race. Both of our race leaders, the top two, have won here before. Mark Davidson, Iquan has him. Jumped a lot of guys in the pit lane. We had a lot of guys take two tires. Keegan Thompson, Eli Bright, Dale Lightning, Nathan Baird, last year's winner here at Dover. Then Silas Orta and Trey Barto. Matt Daly was the guy who took four, I believe. He's there in the 13th position as we head back to the restart. And Alonzo looking to get the jump on the field. Looks like Turner got a better jump heading to turn number one. He's trying to look inside onto that quarter panel. 
You know, I think what these drivers learned from that first caution, you just gotta be patient right now and conserve those tires early on because you don't want to do what Alonzo just did because here comes Jesse off of four. And Jesse Turner, the season two winner here at Dover, he can thank that season two win here at Dover for a season two championship because back then we had the playoff format and the win you're in format and that race win at Dover put him in the chase that year. So Turner looking for his second win of the season. 10 positions, or should I say 10 points, off the wild card heading into this race. Mark Davidson also getting in the inside. And like we saw on the pit lane, Alonso tapped the back of Henderson. That might be slowing that 28 down right here. And that might be why he's falling back right now. He's down to the fifth position after he restarted in the first position. Mom, they got Nathan Baird here. How about that 16? He won this race last year. Still going for his first win of the season. Iquan has him with a strong run here. He won at Homestead. He's looking to the inside. It's three wide right here. How about Father Fruit Motorsports? Keegan Thompson, Mark Davidson running the same scheme this weekend. Thompson to the inside for third on Iquan has him. Thompson has excuse me, not Thompson, rather the 95 of Davidson had a really good run, was able to get down low because of the momentum off of turn four. You get the higher speed there, drive right on past, defend your position perfectly, and that's how that worked. There is Aon there for the 16 to 64. They each got tight in the corner. Yeah, but Nathan Baird there going to get to the inside and take the fourth position away from Hazem. How about Trey Barto, new sponsor, the Pittsburgh Paranormal Investigation Team. Definitely an interesting one there, but Barto, he's been in every single Chick-fil-A Cup Series race. He'd love to get one in his final season here. Up to the sixth position, Bradley Ream, Ryan Durrani up here. Alonzo trying to regain some momentum here in the 28. He's to the inside of his teammate Dale Lightning now. Ryan Durrani back in, or should I say Reagan Whitlock, also up here as well. I mean, Durrani's ahead of him in the 68. Full frontal doing pretty good so far in this race with Durrani and Whitlock. You got Shane Lake moving his way up here, just outside the top 10. How about Tristan Allen? Not too bad right now. 13th for the 06. Doing pretty good right now in that 06 car. He's got a good run on the inside of that 38 of Dale Lightning. That's uh, for, I believe, is that, what spot is that for? Can you Back in the check for me? 12th position, I do believe. Trey Bart yeah. at the inside of Iquan has him. Asim's falling back a little bit here. And how about Nathan Baird? He's close right to the back bumper of the Father Fruit guys of uh, Keegan Thompson and Mark Davidson. That number 16 is fast, and this is how he won last year's race. He had a really fast race car, got around Trey Barto as Barto was leading. I'd watch out for Baird here today. He could have a really good shot at getting around Jesse Turner. But these guys holding up Baird right now, and Turner driving away for the moment. Great run for the Outer Island Motorsport driver Jesse Turner here at Dover. Uh, the, the lead, when you get the lead in these low downforce cars, like in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series, clean air is your best friend. But in common racing, like what you have here, when you're battling for a position, you don't have that much momentum. Right now, if you're Keegan Thompson, you want to be following that 95 big time because it's like teamwork. It's like strategy. I learned this back in my cross-country days. You get your team to try and help you move towards the front, and that's not what that 5 wanted, though because Nathan Baird just drove by Thompson there. For yeah, that don't spot. look now, here comes Trey Barto. He's gonna drive right by Keegan Thompson himself. And Barto and Baird were two guys who were up front in this race last year and they're both in the top five right now and Barto looking really strong. It's been a tough season for this guy. He was the points leader I think after four races but now he's outside the top 30 in points. He went down the drain past few races here. It's still early on in the season though. We're only halfway through the regular season and Barto looking to rebound quite nicely here. Baird as well was strong earlier on in the season but he's fallen back a little bit. He's outside the chase at the moment but a strong run here at Dover, a place where he's won before. Could definitely give him a good oh. opportunity and Dale Lightning in the 38 stopped on the racetrack. An issue for him. He was running inside the top 10 at the time. No caution though as they did not deem it necessary so on the grass back in there on the front stretch. Tough break for Dale Lightning. He was running so well. His day's going to end right there for American Motorsports. Only one driver now, two drivers out of the race. Uh, Dale Lightning going to join LJ Cemento in the garage. Mitchell Henderson is back out there in the 47, but a lap down. Doesn't really have much damage, but uh, he's doing pretty well at the moment. If he can get his lap back, he might still have a shot at a good finish. And then Patrick Smith, who has all that damage, also still out there, a lap down. Everybody else still on the lead lap, including Thomas Troxel and Andrew Miller. Now, going back to uh, the deal with Dale Lightning, I like the call by uh, 
race control. I think we I think the Discord has given him a name. Actually, we got a battle for a second. I'll get back to that in just a moment. And but Nathan look at right to the inside of Davidson. He's been working with Davidson trying to get around him for a while. He's finally going to get that advantage. Now two seconds behind Jesse Turner. But Nathan Bear, Jesse Turner, a couple of Chick-fil-A Cup Series champions going up for this race lead here in the few laps. I think Bear's going to catch up to that 77 in a Let's couple. take a look. Let's take a look as well. The fa I want to look at the fastest lap speeds right now. Who's got the faster car it's at the Turner. moment? Wow. Interesting. Well, let's see what, a lot let's see of that, like you does. mentioned, you want to be out there in clean air, and that's what yeah. Tim has been able to do. And with all the battling that went on for a second early on in this green flag run, Turner was able to drive away from everybody there, and that's probably where he got his fastest lap. Here comes Bartow for third. Bartow is able to keep Thompson behind him. Now he's going to take a position away from Mark Davidson. Ryan Durrani also moving his way through the field. And now we're starting to see the tire wear really come into effect here. Guys like Bartow and Durrani, they've actually been fast this whole run. But uh, they have definitely closed in on these guys for the race lead. And uh, they've moved themselves inside the top five. Of course, Bartow has really done a nice job during this green flag run. Durrani in six could not get around the five. Bradley Ream here in the car that won here at Dover last year when Nathan Barry was behind the wheel. He's seventh. Shane Lake is eighth. Hasim rebounding nicely in the ninth position. But how about Tristan Allen here in ninth? Hasim's actually in tenth. He continues to fall back. Reagan Whitlock in a tank's tenth away from him there in the 92 machine. And we're going to have three wide off the corner. Has him going way up the racetrack. Yepes also moving his way through the field very well in the 88. You know, I've been looking at it as well. The gap between first and second, although it increased that time, though, it looks like that 16 of Bayard is closing in about a tenth of a second per lap. So I think right now Nathan Bayard's got the best car here, but that's getting a little bit tight for... See who's going to be the first one to get left by race leader Jesse Turner. Now, if you're Jesse Turner here and dealing with the lap traffic, you got to be careful with those two going side by side. You do not want to risk getting your car all torn up with lap traffic, especially when you have a, the, probably the best car here right now, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Lap traffic can definitely be tough here. I mean, heck, lap traffic stole Chase Elliott's first career win away from me. Um, so <laughs> it's a tough place to get around lap traffic. Maybe not as much as Talladega like we saw last week, but Turner's got to be careful around uh, Miller and Smith here because if he does not get around those guys properly, Nathan Barrett's going to close right into him. But he has been gaining on the 16, and Turner has the advantage of actually saving his tires right now, and Barrett really had to go for it on Thompson and Davidson, so that might be why he's slipping up just a little bit. Bartow might actually close in for a second here on the 16. He wants a little bit of redemption from last year. I mean, Barrett took that win away from him while well, Bartow still had a really long losing streak. Bartow would love to beat that 16, maybe even get the win himself here in the Mr. Good Bar 400 for 2020. Yeah, absolutely. So going back to my comment on uh, Dale Lightning, I liked the uh, an amazing call there by Race Control not to throw the caution. I think the Discord has actually given a name for our I know our faster route referee. I think we've, we're calling him from now on in all the series, Steve McDonald. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Y'all should be in After Dark. That's where we come up yeah. with this uh, stupid stuff. <laughs> Turner got around Patrick Smith and Andrew Miller nicely there. Baird did close in a little bit, but Baird's also going to have to get around Miller and Smith here. And uh, Turner has a clean racetrack ahead of him, so that's going to work out pretty well for him. Baird kind of tight there with Miller. And uh, watch out for Barto as well. He's also going to close in on these lap cars. Fourth place is Mark Davidson. Ryan Durrani in fifth. Thompson going to fall back to sixth. He's in the clutches of Bradley Ream right now. Watch out for Tristan here in the 06, closing in on Shane Lake. That is for the 8th position, and then 10th right now is Diego Yepes in the 88. Great run for Yepes this whole season. He's 26 ahead of the cutoff, and uh, he's had a pretty good race here today. Of course, he barely avoided that wreck that we had early on in the race, but uh, great run so far for the Beast Racing driver. Yeah, he's, he's I think he started at the back of the pack, if I recall correctly. And then once he uh, avoided that jam up, that yip yip! Uh, he got by, and now he's got, he's got, in my opinion, a strong car right now. If we do get another caution in this race, uh, don't be surprised if he's uh, contending for this win. Nathan Faden, Reagan Whitlock, swapping positions right there. That is for the 11th position. 13th is John Arndt. Our pole sitter, Sam, and Oskin fell back early on. He's 14th now. Hasm's really falling back in the 64. Now down to 15th. Brett Sierra, Wyatt Quayle, Brad Stover. Gatlin Downey, Nicholas Samadio, that is the top 20. Dalio really fell back. Not entirely sure what happened to him. He's 28th right now. He was one of those guys running up front early on. Uh, Garlington was also another one of those guys. He actually fell back right at the start of the race, but he's 26th right now. Alonzo 
fell all the way back to 25th after he restarted in the first position. That did not work at all for the 28 of Alonzo, season seven winner right there, but it could be because of the 47 and him getting into him on the pit lane that might have slowed the aerodynamics down just a little bit on the 28 machine and his teammate, whom he started alongside in the second row, is looking to get around him here. Ace Garcia back in there, Matt Jalia Fisher G actually got a little bit of damage from that accident. Sadler sort of deep in the field, Nicholas Sykes. Alexander Rowe, this is a big one right here. Our points leader, 32nd. He's been whipping up a lot of strong runs so far this season, but now not looking too strong for the season six over winner. Troxel is actually going to get around him, and he has all that damage right there. Stapleton deep in the field. Hot seat driver of Jeremiah Dwayne, his first career Chick-fil-A Cup Series start deep in the field, and Cody Sill, Eli Bright, last cars on the lead lap. Nathan Barrett's closing in a little bit here on Jesse Turner. One and a half seconds between the two champions. And next time by, we'll be halfway to the Mr. Goodbar 400 here at the Dover International Speed. What are your thoughts on this race so far? A very interesting one up front. Who do you think is going to be the race winner? I mean, your pick to win at the start of the show is still leading, but Baird is closing in at number 16. You know, well, first off, before I give you my, uh, who I think could actually win now, now that we're at the halfway point, is there going to be one more stop in the race or no? Oh, yeah, there definitely will be. They're going to have to come in. So I think it's going to come down to who pits earlier, though. You know, D Dover not really an aerodynamics track. Actually, what now who pits earlier? But who pits later? Because if you pit a lap two, maybe three laps later, it could come down to fresher rubber. Remember, that was one of my keys coming into the race. If you pit later, you may have that fresher rubber and go up, 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 and you could have a chance to win it, but we'll just have to see what happens. I still think my main man, Jesse Turner, is going to get it done. We'll have to see. You bring up a good point there because you do want to initially come down first, but the longer of a green flag run we're going to have to end this race, the later you're going to want to come down. So it's all about measuring how much time there's going to be left in the race once that cycle begins because if you have those fresh tires later in the run, that's when you can really gain your speed. But uh, if you, and you know, the... if I can follow up on that, sorry, Neverman, if I can follow up on that, we've seen that happen in the New Era Cup Series earlier this year. Phoenix, we saw a, a long green flag run to the end, and that helped out Ethan Hoffman get the win. Atlanta, you saw that happen too. Ryan Ferris got the win there. The reason they both got the win in those races, fresher Goodyear tires. So that's really going to be a key at a track like Dover. It definitely will be, and you're going to start seeing these guys really slow down. We really noticed the difference in speed in yesterday's Circuit Hill Series race. I mean, those guys, it's almost like a caution was out while they were going through the corner. We're going to have to see if that's the case for these guys, but they're still not slowing down to that level quite yet, but... It is really difficult to maneuver this place on worn tires, and Nathan Baird seems to be maneuvering it just a little bit better right now than Jesse Turner. Andrew Miller's down the pit lane. That looks to be a scheduled stop. And he came down along with everyone else there under that caution, so we'll have to see if that affects him. But uh, going to be interesting to see who gets it all figured out because this pit strategy is really going to determine who gets the race victory. I mean, Turner might be leading right now, but if he stays out just one lap and Baird comes down before him, Baird can gain up to four seconds on that one pit stop, and early on, you do not want to lose that time. The gaps cut down about 15 hundredths of a second that time, but you can't really look... Never mind. Forget what I said there. I thought Trey Barta was coming closer and closer, but I was... Barta's well, three seconds off. You can't count out Barta for this race yeah, either. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if I'm Barta, I'd come down before Turner and Baird. If you do that, you're really going to gain on them. No doubt about it, and Baird, or should I say Barto, in a really good position to possibly steal this race victory away from those guys. Shane Lake and Tristan Allen you know, have those been two with have been each really other. Working together. They have been. Now to the inside of Mark Davidson. They've gotten around Keegan Thompson. They've gotten around Ryan Durrani. These could have been a couple of guys who took two, or should I say four tires on that stop. Allen unable to get around Davidson there, but Shane Lake now up to the fourth position. Great run for our Atlanta winner, Shane Lake, who's third in the points coming into this race. And Tristan Allen with a great run as well. Knock on wood. And here we go. Oh, oh Bradley oh, Reed, who has already come down the pit lane, getting into the 16 of Nathan Baird. And that's actually why Shane Lake is up to the position he's in right now, because Reem had already come down to make his stop. And you're going to see the difference here. Reem trying to get around Turner. He's stuck right behind him, but he's going to go right by him down the backstretch here. 
No, he laid the chrome horn there on the 16 of Bear. That's kind of why Turner won for a moment, so Bear could lose his momentum, though. But Turner way tight there. This could open the door for the 16, but they're all jamming on the brakes and let all those drivers come in. You know, Dover, it's a really tough place to enter on pit road. Look how it affected me in the in your NASCAR Heat Online League when we raced here. Yeah, exactly. And uh, these guys, you know, there are a lot of guys in the back of the field who have already made stops. You mentioned, I mentioned Bradley Ream there in the 40. But, I mean, Baird might almost want to be the race leader once this cycle begins for the leaders here. But Turner's still holding does, on. Does does Turner have right, right front damage to the fender, or is that He's common? He's got a bit of it. There's a bit of damage oh. on that 77. That might have been because of guys coming off the pit lane. It doesn't seem to be affecting him that much right now, but there is, in fact, damage on the 77. Not entirely sure what ensued there, but with all those guys coming down the pit lane like we saw, or coming off, I should say, Sam and Oscar now coming off. Chain Lake just announced a lap there. Basically the same top 10 as we've had. They've all stayed out there, but a lot of guys in the back of the field have decided to come down the pit lane. Here we go for the race lead. Nathan Baird finally going to get to the inside of Turner. He closed right up on him, and they're side by side for the race lead. And Baird's going to take it away from the 77. Here comes Sam and Oskin with fresh tires going to move his way through these guys. And then Stapleton in the 97 also going to join with these guys. And now Baird is going to come down the pit lane. Took the race lead, and he's going to come down as the race leader. That was a smart move out of Baird. He wanted to wait until he got the race lead. Bartow's going to stay out and lead a lap. That's not going to help Bartow. But I'm really intrigued to see how this whole thing's going to cycle through because we've had so many guys in the back of the field come down. Allen's come down already. He's going to have a bit of an advantage on the field here. But Nathan Baird is our race leader. Going to come down the pit lane, lead Jesse Turner down for his final stop of the race. Let's... 77's pit stop here. I want to see if he takes longer when he gets off the jack from the left sides because of the damage repair to that right front fender. Remember, that's aero damage. That's kind of similar to what happened with Matt DiBenedetto um, at the Bristol Motor Speedway when he had to deal with Ryan Newman there. And Bayard's yeah. already gone. Turn yeah. of the damage. He's, he's done. They got to get done. that thing repaired. And unfortunately, he's going to fall back in this one and lose his shot at the race victory. And it had to be someone who was coming off the pit lane there. Meanwhile, if I am not mistaken, I have to see here where Bradley Ream falls into play here, but he might have jumped the field here. We're going to have to wait for this to cycle through. Baird is, is now listed third, and he's ahead of Baird at this point. How about Bradley Ream with that strategy call? He came down much earlier than everybody else, and now you're going to see Turner there coming off the pit lane in the 77 he's gonna go way behind he might end up going a lap down here as Bradley Reams coming around in the 40 now do we do we know what lap Bradley Ream pitted on or no not exactly there's your race leader but he is destroyed right now I don't know exactly what happened to the 33 oh, he's gonna come here. down the pit this lane and run. up into the wall oh. Brad Stover, Cameron Garlington, oh. and they're going to pile it up into the corner. Bradley oh, Lee involved. We did it. We did it. A oh. race leader. Oh, oh, and they continue to stack it up as they race back to the line. Oh. Bear also Bear involved in the 16 oh. as Delia goes upside down. And they're racing back to the line as Let's the track up. is clogged up, and so many guys are going to get caught up in this one. Unbelievable. Wow. I, I am speechless right now. Lap traffic has definitely changed the game. Race leaders Tristan Allen, by the way. He avoided it. I knocked he on wood hard Tristan. enough for him. No damage, I do believe, on the 06. Sam and Oskin finds himself back into the second position. I think Henderson still lapped down. Shane Lake, Ryan Durrani avoided it. Bartow got damage from that accident. Ace Garcia... These guys avoided it. Mark Davison, Cody Sill, Zachary Fitzwater. Diego Yepes avoided it. <laughs> Your guys, man, I tell you what. And then Silas Order rounding up the Beachless. top ten now. On Now, you know who this could help out? Did Jesse Turner get it? He did not. He, he didn't. Did not. And if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, he is back on the lead lap. He was ahead of Bradley Ream when that wreck happened. But the emotions for Bradley Ream right now. He was He's leading the hot. race en route to his first career Napa fan win. And then he gets caught up in something that isn't his fault. A lot of guys are going to get knocked out of this one. You got 
The 22 hey. there, Gatlin Downey. Barto should be all right. Just a little bit of damage on the four machine. He'll get back out there, and I think he'll stay on the lead lap as well. Oh my goodness, just, a, just an absolute disgrace there through the corner. And Eli Bright, I don't know what happened to him. I mean, he had a ton of damage, and that caused him to be really slow. He was on the outside lane trying to come down the pit lane, and something very similar happened at Bristol to Eli Bright. It was him and Iquan Hazem. I think Hazem was the one who came down on him at Bristol, and he was going to be the race leader once that whole thing cycled through at Bristol. Eli Bright, though, was the one who cut down here today. And a lot of guys are not going to be happy with that 33, but we saw Archer breaks last week. We saw him again here today. Let's see what happened to bring out the first, second, second caution of the race here in the Mr. Goodbar 400 at Dover. This, this is, uh, this is just as sad. Eli Bright was the race leader at the time of this accident. I don't think he had any business being the race leader the way his car was, but that has nothing to do with it. He was... Three lanes up, trying to come down the pit lane. Brad Stover and Cameron Garlington are there. Daniel McMillan. I mentioned he's been caught up in a lot of wrecks this season. He avoided another one there in the 79. Nowhere to go for Nikolay Sykes. And it just, it's a clean sweep racetrack. These guys are going to come down. There's just no room to go. Fisher G got a piece of it there. Alexander Rowe might have as well. But the big hit was Kukulon. Turner avoids this in the 77. Yeah. Keep that in mind. But right here, Bradley Ream would have taken the race lead after all of this. He would have been in the catbird seat to win this race. But he ran right into that accident. He's going to be out of the race. Then you got Matt Dalio, Keegan Thompson. They're going to come in here. Run right into Brad Stover. Dalio tried to avoid it on the inside. But he did not have enough time to react back up. And here is the official lead change. Tristan Allen in the 06, avoiding Matt Dalio, avoiding Ace Garcia ahead of him, and avoiding Sebastian Kukulon. Oh, he got a bit of damage, Ooh, though. That could change everything. That could affect him. Iquan has him going around, and this one's a hard one. Barto, who had a good shot Ooh. at this one as well, got a piece of it, but they did get that car repaired. And then Dalio got hit by Nathan Bear back in well. there. Gatlin Downey came in. Dalio has definitely got the worst of this one. He went upside down and everything. And then Gatlin Downey going around. John Arnt's coming through in the 05, and he runs right into him. We'll just replay that in real time. Took him a while, Damn. but he, he couldn't go anywhere because Mark Davidson was, was inside. John Arnt would have been in a really good position in this race hadn't he not gotten into those guys. And by the time the wreck went... By the time the wreck was done, McMillan had gone around the racetrack again and then got caught up in it. Bruh. He's got a little bit of damage in the 79, but he should be able to continue. Nothing major. They should be able to repair that, but unbelievable. Absolutely unfreaking believable. Eli Bright on worn tires. You know, I don't know if the drivers behind him uh didn't see the signal that he was coming down pit road or the fact that eli bright just was just on the high side before coming in which i mean I, he shouldn't be and then here's just this huge stack up there there you see bradley ream take a pit there wait till you see tristan allen find the perfect hole he hasn't entered the picture yet there he is he goes by and then there's nathan bayard making contact the big one at the monster mile we've seen it many times in the past in real life nascar races and it can change everything. And the fact is, well, with the high banking in the turns, that's like oh, either low. Lopez took a hit there. That's either yeah. it's low 30 banking or high 20 banking. Whatever it is, uh, the slope of the turns can definitely affect where you're at in, at the time of a crash. The monster has been in hibernation a couple of years. We've gone the past two years without a caution in this race. It has definitely been awakened. That coronavirus definitely. Uh, Shook that monster up today, and uh, he, he's not happy. He ain't happy at all. Thought last week's wreck was wild. That one was wild as well. We're going to go on board with Tristan Allen, see what happened from his perspective. Following on board, our current race leader, Tristan Allen. He gained the race lead because of this action. You see all the smoke happening ahead of him here. You're going to see Dalio and Keegan Thompson get involved. They move up, and he splits the middle. 
just a bit of a tap on Ace Garcia. We'll have to see if that affects him enough. Sam and Ozkin behind him has a little bit of damage. It's going to be a wild one to finish this one out on the Mr. Good Bar 400. Tristan Allen, your race leader. Let's see what happens on the restart here at the Monster Mile. We're back here at the Monster Mile in Dover, Delaware. This one is definitely going to be a race to be remembered in seasons to come. Wild stuff happening here. We've had so many different leaders in this race as well. A lot different than what we saw last year here. Tristan Allen, your race leader. Sam and Askin is in second. Mitchell Henderson is a lap down. Actually, two laps down, excuse me. I believe he had already made his stop and ended up falling a couple laps down there because of that. But he actually is going to get a much better finish than what he would have if this thing stayed green. Shane Lake, Ryan Durrani, Mark Davidson, Cody Sill is also a lap down in the 37. Zachary Fitzwater, Diego Yepes, Thomas Troxel is 8th. Silas Orton here, Jalarvin Alonzo, the top 10. Troxel involved in that crash early on with a chance at winning this race. But you said Shane Lake because both Allen and Oz can have a bit of damage. That 15 is clean. We'll have to see how it all goes down. 21 to go at Dover in the Mr. Good Bar 400 for Tristan Allen. Absolutely. You got, You and I were talking about this off the air. This could be Shane Lake's race to lose. But he's got to deal with patience because of the of uh, the lap car separating second and third. And they're already going three wide here. Hang on here. They're trying to get by Thomas Troxon with the damage. I mean, they might be trying to get around Diego Yepes because he ended up hitting someone on That's that crush in there. So he's got damage. Allen able to hold on. Shane Lake going to get around the lap machine of Mitchell oh. Henderson. Henderson tapped the wall a little bit. You know what? You know what? You Don't can't look now. out this guy, can you? Fitz is going to go to the inside of Davidson for the fourth position, or at least try to take that position away from the 95. Shane Lake's coming, though, to the inside of Sam and Askin for second. Watch yeah, out for that 15, He's though. He is coming. This could be his race to lose. And now, if those two drivers battle it out for the race lead, we mentioned it earlier, don't count out either Fitzy or Mark Davidson out of the conversation. Yeah, here comes Allen's Lake not even going to have a chance here. Shane Lake to the inside for the race lead. Allen's going to try to hold the outside, but he's not going to be able to do it. There goes Shane Lake to the race lead here at Dover. A good car right now, but here comes Davidson and Fitzwater. They are trying to pounce all over. That 83 of Oz came for a third. Then he got four cards under a blanket battling for six. Cody Sill is a lap down. Remember that. Silas oh, yeah. Order, though, his teammate, is on the lead lap to the inside of Mitchell Henderson. Henderson two laps down. Ryan Durrani currently in the sixth position. Orta is seventh. Whitlock is eighth. Alonzo and Brett Sierra. Sam Adio hey, moving his way through the field. Traxel falling back as well. Is it just me or have these cautions really helped out here at Joe Arvin Alonso? Because he hasn't had the best car all day today, and he's running the top ten. Yeah. Of course, he was able to avoid that accident. That helped him out tremendously there. Shane Lake is pulling away now in the 15. The fact that he didn't have any damage there. I mean, Allen has minimal damage, but it's enough, I think, to slow him down off the uh, the 15. And you see the damage to Sam at Oskin as well. Davidson and Fitzwater, though, they've not been able to close in on those guys. Now, here's the thing. Tire wear might also come into play here. They're not going to have to come down again, but they came in quite a while ago, and by the time this race ends, those tires are going to be worn out. We're going to have to see if someone can serve their tires enough to move their way through the field and have a shot at this one. You see Alonzo and Durrani. They're going to both uh, get around Mitchell Henderson right here. And you got Sam Medeo now inside the top 10. He got around Brett Sierra. Watch out for Mr. Edge, man. He's won here before. Had a clean race so far. Henderson going way up the racetrack in the 47 machine. You gotta be oh, careful. Be careful here. Sam Adio gonna push. Oh, hard in the wall. Oh, wow. Alexander Rowe. And he was hard in the wall. Look at the damage. A lot of damage on our points leader. Caution back out here at Dover. That's not what we wanted. Stapleton and Miller. That is not what Shane Lake wanted at all. He had an amazing lead over Tristan Allen. Those two drivers had damage, and this could help out Fitzy and Davidson on what could be the final restart of the race. Did it come down or what? I mean, if you're someone in the back and you come down and no, take I tires... No, I come down. 
I don't think I would come down if I were any of these drivers right now. You're in the back, I'd come down. I mean, you got McMillan and, and uh, Garlington back in here. It's still in the lead lap. How about Edwin Mendez? And the hot Jeremiah Dwayne. They're hot both still in this thing. Nobody came down, though. Except Troxel. Troxel came down, but he might have been involved in the accident. Not entirely sure if I the uh, accident won't. was caused because of the uh, 35 slowing down there. Tough break, though, as well for Jesse Turner. I think I saw him involved in the crash as well. He had a good day, and then uh, pit stops happened. Lost the lead at the time to Bayard. And look at the rear-end damage to that Otter Island racing car. Yeah, he got caught up in that one. Stapleton also in the 97. I think Stapleton's done for the day. And Andrew Miller, the second wreck of the day. He was involved in the first one with Thomas Troxel earlier on. Nobody came down. Interesting to see that. We'll have to see if Shane Lake can hold on for this race win. I, I don't know who's going to win it, but first, let's see what happens to bring out the third caution of the day here in the Mr. Goodbar 400 at Dover. Troxel blew up through turn two. Garlington couldn't avoid him, spun him around. Turner was right behind him. McMillan, Turner's teammate, got a piece of it. And then Stapleton just runs right into all that, right into the back of Turner. That's going to end Stapleton's day, no doubt about it. And he comes up on Bartow and collects him. Patrick Smith able to avoid this in the 30. Smith was involved in that first accident that we had earlier on. And then Miller can't see anything for all the smoke. Sideswipes the 35. Actually? Oh, I think it's Stapleton, Stapleton here. Yeah. He tried to slow down. He didn't really get into him. Well, he did get into him quite a bit there. Yeah. <laughs> Tough break for those guys involved in the back of the field, but... Troxel's had too much damage to continue, and kaboom, went the engine. Yeah, engine just let go underneath the 35 of Troxel. Oh, you know, that's... Sorry to interrupt you. That's when we saw Alex in a row pop the outside wall, and that's what caused that to happen. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, absolutely. But no worries there, and then you can just see the 24 of Andrew Miller. I think he may have had brake problems from a pre after a previous accident, so I don't know there. But the yellow flag is back out, and once again, like I shot, said, Shane Lake was pulling away from Tristan Allen, not what the 15 wanted. We're going to have to see who pulls it off here at Dover. We're going to have to see if Shane Lake can hold him off, or will he get wide to a corner? Will Allen, Oskin, or Fitzy get the win here at Dover? Fitzy's going for his 10th career Chick-fil-A Cup Series race victory. Going to be a wild one, less than 10 laps to go in the Mr. Goodbar 400 from Dover. We are back here at the Monster Mile, Dover, Delaware. My goodness, it's been a monster race today. That monster is awake and alive, and he was hungry. So many guys knocked out of the race so far. We had that huge wreck earlier on. Only 20 guys on the lead lap, and you see everyone knocked out of the race from Stapleton, actually from Troxel on down, out. Just like Talladega last week. We had that huge wreck and another huge one here today. But now... With nine laps to go, it's down to Shane Lake, Tristan Allen, Sam Adaz, Kim Zachary, Fitzwater, Mark Davidson, Silas Orta, Reagan Whitlock, Ryan Durrani, Hergelar, and Alonzo, Nicholas Sam Adia. That is the top ten. They all have strong enough cars to win this thing, but can they get around Shane Lake? Nine to go at Dover in the Mr. Good Bar 400. Lake did not look like he got a good jump there. This could help out Tristan Allen. He's right on. To the rear bumper. Let's see what happens. The Alan, back straight, they pulled away. Trying all he can to get around the 15 of Shane Lake. Shane's a little wide, but so is Allen. Gonna stay with him. Eight laps to go at Dover for Shane Lake and Velocistar Racing. They won last week. They're going for their second straight win as a team. Oh, but he's wide again. Will Allen get a run off of turn two? He'll get a little bit closer to him here. Come in. Tristan Allen looking for his first ever Chick-fil-A Cup Series win. He's won the All-Star Race before, but has never won Here extra Fitzy. race. Here comes Fitzy! That's for third on oh. Sam and Oskin. Do not count out Fitzy yet. That guy has fresh tires, I think. Shane Lake beginning to put a bit of a gap between him and Tristan Allen. He has a slightly better race car. I think Lake's biggest concern should be Fitzwater at this point. We're going to have to see how it all shakes out here. Lake wide again. Fitzwater's going to have to get around Allen here quickly if he's going to have a shot on the 15. Just being consistent right now, conserving his tires at the moment. Um, just does not want to make a mistake, but he may have to do some mirror driving, play some defense right now. 
at the moment. Now, in my opinion, if you're Shane Lake, you'd love to see a caution flag come out the rest of the race. Over, not not this lap, but next lap, though. Well, we as fans do not want to see that. We want to see a clean Absolutely. flag finish here. We we lost a few laps at the end of last week's race. Don't want it to happen again. Fitzwater, the back bumper of Tristan Allen. He's got to get around him right here. He may have to put the chrome horn on, horn on him in turns one and two. He's trying he's everything. He's right there. Though. He's got the faster race car. All he needs to do is get around him on this lap, and he's going to have a chance at the race victory. Allen going to move up. Here comes Fitzwater for second. Shane Lake really wide through the corner that time. And Lake almost in the outside wall. Watch out for him. Here comes Zachary Fitzwater in the number nine. Will he have enough for the 15 of Shane Lake at the end of this race? He got wide there after trying to pass Allen entering turn number one because he was coming to the low line on the front straightaway. But let's see what happens. Who's got the better tires oh, here? Oh, he went oh. wide again. That's going to hurt good. him. Shane Lake going to pull away again. Ah, that was a mistake out of Fitzwater there through turn number four. But it's still not over yet. Shane Lake could also make another mistake. Fitzwater, seven-tenths of a second at this point. He lost a lot of ground that last lap there. And Shane Lake starting to scoot away. Allen to the back bumper of Fitzwater. Not enough for Allen to get around the nine. I think Fitzwater might have just lost the race right there. Two to go for Shane Lake here at Dover. Looking for the second win of the season for this 15 team. And the third for Velocistar Racing this season. One and a half seconds now. I think it's done. Allen and Fitzwater continue to battle. Shane Lake able to pull off with a race victory. If he can cross the start finish line next time by in the first position, because I'm getting ahead of myself. White flag here at Dover for Shane Lake and Velocistar Racing. Allen's gonna move back to second. Now, Allen would love to see Shane Lake blow a motor right now, but I don't think that's gonna happen. What a race here at Dover. It's gonna go to rookie Shane Lake for his second career Chick-fil-A Cup Series race victory off a of turn four. Shane Lake wins the Mr. Goodbar 400 at Dover. Allen, Fitzwater, Durrani, Ozkin, Davidson, Whitlock, Sam Adio, Orta, and Brett Sierra round out the top 10. Good win for Shane Lake. You know, he had the best car after the big wreck because of remember of Allen's arrow damage Shane Lake got out of that clean and that's pretty much uh, what gave Shane Lake the race win so congratulations to him and the 15 Toyota team what a race here at Dover Poof. Shane Lake at the end of all the madness getting the race victory in the 11th race of the season Tristan Allen finishing second oh man what could have been for Tristan here today. Zachary Fitzwater, what could have been for him as well. But uh, he, he lost the tires there at the end there. He had a run, but he lost the tires. Ryan Durrani, Sam and Oskin, Mark Davidson, Reagan Whitlock, Nicholas Sam, Medio Silas, Order, Brett Sierra. And then, wow. I didn't think it was going to be like this today. But Same. My goodness. Troxel, Stapleton, Faden, Baird, Bright, Reem, Garcia, Kukulon, Downey, Arndt, G, Haslam, Dalio, Stover, Sykes, Thompson, Lightning, Semedo, all out of the race. Mitchell Henderson finished 23rd. Now, he was doing pretty well at the start of this thing, then had that pit road incident, but I didn't think he would finish 23rd in this race. And we saw Alonzo fall way back early on. He went to finish 12th. Pretty strong run for him. Alexander Rowe, I mean, he was in the 30s before that big wreck happened, and he finished 13th. Can't keep that guy away from the top 15, no matter what you try to do. But Marty, final thoughts on this wild race from Dover. I mean, my goodness, man. I got no words. I'm speechless. I think that's all I can say right now. <laughs> you should come here in the New Era Cup Series. That would yeah. be a pretty fun race. Shane Lake, your race winner here at Dover, his second win of the season. Next week, Marty, Martinsville under the lights. Oh, yeah. That and then it's the also race the weekend one. after that. It's going to be pretty lit here in the next couple of weeks. Yes, I just <laughs> said that. So I'm going to say in after dark quite a bit. Uh, it's going to be fun, though, for the next few uh, weeks here in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. Got a lot of night races coming up. We got the Martinsville night race, STP Old Dominion 500 next Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern on Napa Fan. <laughs> I thought this one was wild. I think that one's also going to be a wild race. The All-Star race. Net Friday after that and 9 p.m. Eastern time from Charlotte and then the Coke 600 the Friday night after that. And that's always a fun race from the Charlotte Motor Speedway. So much good stuff coming up here in the NOFSRL and then the Indianapolis 250 is also coming up too. 
It's the month of May, and while in real life it's not really happening, it's happening here on Napa Fan and on Mario's channel and on Ethan Lewis's channel. Go check out the Home Depot Pro Series as well. Give them a shout out there. So much coming up here in the month of May, and what a way to get it started here with this wild race from Dover. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks to Marty for calling this race with me, and congratulations to Shane Lake on his race victory. Here are the points after 11 races in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. And Marty, I don't know what else to say at this point except my classic <laughs> catchphrase. So with that in mind, we'll see you guys next time for the SCP Old Dominion 500 from Martinsville. On behalf of Marty Zakela. I will see you guys later!